guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. In today's home exercise tutorial, we are going to go over what you guys have been asking for for months and I'm finally getting around to it and that is how to open the hand. So there's a few things I want to go over as far as helping you determine what stage you are at in the recovery process and help you figure out what the exact problems are with your wrist and your hand that you're trying to solve so that moving forward beyond this video you will be able to do your own research and actually find the best exercises to help you with your specific symptoms and then we'll get into some of the treatment strategies but before we get into all that if you're new to my channel and you haven't yet subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button turn on that notification bell so that you'll be notified every time i upload new videos and now let's go ahead and dive in so first and foremost what are some of the problems that happen after a stroke because i'm assuming the majority of people that are asking for these exercises have suffered some type of brain damage or brain lesion so whether that's a stroke or brain injury or maybe even possibly ms you might end up with some problems with your hand but regardless of your exact diagnosis when there is damage to the brain there is two things that can either happen you can either end up with an arm that is very flaccid and very limp or you can end up with an arm that is very spastic where the muscles are very overactive or you're on a continuum so there is there are stages of recovery and usually they go from being very very limp having a very limp arm to having a little bit of spasticity and then beyond that would be actually regaining coordinated movement so what happens typically is someone usually in their recovery usually gets stuck in one of those stages and so if you're in the early stages and you're kind of stuck in one of those early stages then the arm would be very limp meaning your arm just hangs there your hand isn't really fisted up but it just kind of stays open all the time you can't really close it and you can't really open it so you don't have a lot of voluntary movement and now this next area is very broad so so even at some point you do develop a little bit of spasticity or spastic patterns and this can go from very very mild to very very severe spasticity if you're in this stage now as you get to the end of the stage the goal is is that the spasticity starts to go down and then you are able to move on to the next stage which is coordinated movement but in this spastic stage you could just have a little bit of stiffness in your hand meaning that it does have a tendency to close up and your wrist does have a tendency to flex but with a little bit of effort you can open your hand back up and there are even times where it might actually stay open then there is the what i would call like the moderate level of spasticity meaning that your hand stays fisted quite a bit and it takes a little bit more effort to get that hand open meaning there's a little bit more resistance when you try and open your hand or if you try and pull the thumb out or if you try and extend your wrist you have a little bit more resistance and then severe spasticity would be that the hand pretty much stays closed most of the time the thumb really pulls in so a lot of people have pain right in the palm of their hand um, the wrist really stays flexed and if you can get it open it takes a lot of effort and there's a lot of resistance to passive movement so there's a lot of resistance when you try and extend the wrist or if you try and open the fingers or pull out the thumb now why do i go over all that before i get into the treatment because a lot of people ask me for exercises and how to strengthen the hand when really they're not ready for that yet so if you are in the moderate to severe stage of recovery your main goals are going to be to stretch 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 and splinting now in that moderate to severe stage you do need some kind of a pretty rigid splint um a lot of people use the sabo stretch in this stage it's 50 50 whether or not it's going to work for you in my experience a lot of times those patients that have that severe spasticity that have the sabo stretch when they come to therapy the splint is always just flexed over because it's meant to 
kind of give in to the spasticity a little bit and then spring back open. But if your spasticity is so strong, it ends up just staying flexed up all the time. And then of course that's no good. The splint's not really doing any good. So um, that's why I say if that moderate to severe stage, you really do need a much more rigid splint. I know I'm gonna get this question. Unfortunately, I don't have any good recommendations on one. I have tried so many different braces with different patients and they're either too heavy, too bulky, they don't hold the fingers down, the hand pops up inside of it. Um, so right now I am working on creating one that hopefully um, I will be, I, that will be available soon. So stay tuned for that if you are in that stage. But again, you're probably not ready for active movement. And actually active, really trying to do active movement in this stage could be counterproductive because every time, if you have a lot of spasticity, you know this, every time you put a lot of effort into movement, the hand just fists up more. So really in this stage, and we're going to go through some stretches, but it's stretching and splinting critical, especially if you want to be able to progress through those other stages and get to that stage of coordinated movement, you've got to wear your splint. As much as most of you don't like it, you got to wear it. Um, and then there's that mild spasticity where you do still want to spend a lot of time stretching, but you can probably start to incorporate some active movement in this stage. We'll get into that a little bit further on in the video as to how you handle that. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the stretching. So there's a few things that you need to keep in mind that are critical when it comes to stretching the arm, especially if you are in that, in one of the stages where you do have some moderate to severe spasticity. One thing as far as setup and how you want to do it is you want to have your elbow, your arm supported. You have to be as relaxed as possible. And so you want that entire arm to be able to rest on something. Um, in this stage also, I should have brought this up with the splinting. If you can, an arm trough is really handy. Not, it's, uh, it's kind of like, basically a trough that goes on the armrest of your wheelchair. It does a couple of things. One, it supports your arm, so your arm can be more relaxed and it might not stay as spastic or curled up. The other thing it does is because there's that little trough, it does also, if you guys have watched some of my shoulder videos, there's a strong tendency for that arm to stay internally rotated because your forearm sits in a trough that goes straight, um, it really does help to prevent some of the spasticity and tightness up in your shoulder as well because it keeps that arm rotated outward just a little bit more. And then along those same lines of just keeping your arm relaxed, really pay attention to your environment. If you know that bright lights or loud sounds or people talking, anything like that in the background makes your spasticity a little bit worse, try to eliminate as much of that as possible. Keep in mind as well as emotional stress, fighting with someone, things like that can also cause that spasticity to be a little bit worse. Not that you can't stretch during that time, but just be aware that all those things might make it a little bit harder to get your hand open. Once you have everything set up and you have a nice quiet environment, now you're ready to go. So you're just gonna start by again, having your arm supported on a table. And then the best way to do this is just to start with your wrist completely flexed down. Down. And now that is because some of the joints that become spastic, they cross multiple joints. So they not only flex the fingers and make a fist for the hand, but they also flex the wrist because they actually attach way up on your forearm. So what that does by flexing your wrist is it gives a little bit of slack to those muscles. So if they are a little bit tight or they do an involuntary contraction, you have a little bit more slack and you might even, you might be able to move through the exercise a little bit easier. So have the hand dangling off the side of the table. And then if you can, the best thing to do is to start with the thumb and try and get to th the thumb out to the side. That usually makes the whole hand relax. You'll probably immediately feel it right in the palm of your hand that you'll get some relief in that area. If you don't, give it about 30 seconds. It does take a little bit of time for that muscle to relax. And when you pull it out with all the stretches, you wanna go slow. I'll put a link in the description below for the series that I did on spasticity. If you haven't watched that 
that series, I highly recommend it. It gives you a lot more information regarding spasticity and some of the things that you need to be careful of. And one of those things is lengthening a muscle too quickly. So you want to move really, really slow. And then if you can, it takes a little bit of Houdini-ish skills to keep that thumb out to the side, but it is possible. You just got to go slow and be patient. You want to kind of hold that thumb out to the side and then try and kind of use your fingers to kind of extend the fingers at the same time. Again, your wrist should still be flexed and your hand should still be kind of hanging off the table. If you can't do that, work on the thumb for a good while and forget about the fingers for now if you can't get them all open at the same time and really stretch that thumb again the thumb is critical bringing that thumb out to the side really stretches the muscles that are very prone to spasticity in the wrist and the hand so spend a lot of time bringing that thumb out to the side and then go to the fingers again this is if you can't do them at the same time and then just kind of you're just gonna kind of put your hand on top of your other hand and really just kind of pull those fingers into extension again trying to keep your wrist and your arm as relaxed as possible every now and again check in with your shoulder and just make sure your shoulder is not starting to rise up and come up towards your ear and if it is really try and just let it fall into the table again that is critical to try and keep that as relaxed the upper arm as relaxed as possible and then i have shown this in other videos but i'll go ahead and show it again now the trick is and this is if you have severe spasticity you want to kind of carefully pull the hand back now you're going to start to extend the wrist so you'll get a little bit of a deeper stretch on those muscles that make that hand fist up and then basically just press down on that hand and just hold it uh, if you have severe spasticity i would go through this sequence multiple times a day and keep in mind it's gonna if you if you're not giving it 10 to 15 minutes minimum to do what i just did you're not you're not doing it long enough it you have to go super duper slow and then just hold it if you can move your hand a little bit without the hand popping back up into a fist maybe you're more in like the moderate slash mild spasticity range um, rub your hand really kind of get to know your hand get your brain to kind of wake up to the side of the body and again, just hold this as long as possible. And then once you're here, if you want to just kind of hold your hand down with your opposite wrist and extend those fingers just a little bit more, if you can do that, if not, just hold it. A lot of times what happens if you have severe spasticity is as soon as you go to move your hand, your uninvolved hand that's holding it down, the hand's just going to pop up into a fist. So. If it doesn't do that, you could start kind of working the fingers out just a little bit more. So that is for the fingers and the thumb. And then the other one that you want to do just for the, this is specific for the wrist and it's critical. Now just kind of clasp your hands together and just do circles, really working extension of that wrist. So you really want to work on getting that wrist back and then if you've been following me for a while you know that i love 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 any kind of weight bearing so i'm just going to show one other way to stretch your wrist uh, a lot of people aren't going to be able to do this but if at all possible if you can get in this weight bearing position if you can get that hand and that wrist in weight bearing it's an excellent excellent stretch for your wrist and your fingers it's just that a lot of people, their spasticity and their tightness is a little bit too strong that they can't get in this position. But if you can, go ahead and stand up with it on a table and just kind of get a little bit more weight down through that hand with your uninvolved hand. And then if you can get the hand flat, now you can kind of lean your body forward a little bit and even work a little bit more extension. Now, we're going to move on to a couple of active exercises remember a lot of you have moderate to severe spasticity in your hand so if you do stick with the stretches stick with the splinting stick with the recommendations i made at the beginning of this video but if you are in that mild phase you can start to work mild phase of spasticity or even maybe you don't have any spasticity or you're in the flaccid phase some things you can do to kind of get 
the extension or kind of activate the muscles that extend that wrist and that hand are quick stretches. So if you quickly lengthen the muscle, this is if you don't have any spasticity. If you quickly lengthen the muscles that extend the wrist and extend the fingers a little bit, sometimes you might get like a response. You might get that muscle to recoil a little bit. It's kind of like that stretch reflex that we talk about with spasticity, but now you're using that for the good. So you want to create a little bit of a quick stretch to get like an involuntary extension so same thing with your hand dangling off the side now when you dangle your hand off the side like this and your wrist is flexed you should be able to open your fingers with the assist of gravity if you can't and it really fists up you are probably in the moderate to severe category of spasticity but dangling the hand if you can get the muscles that fist the wrist to relax you can work on this as gravity assisted extending the fingers and then from here that quick stretch i mentioned you actually want to pull that thumb in and almost kind of quickly let go of it so you're going to pull it in and give it a quick stretch and the goal is is that you're getting like this involuntary extension and you can do that with all your fingers just kind of quickly pull them down now when you do that if they fist up even more then do not do this exercise i'm telling you if you are in the moderate to severe stage of spasticity just own it and be patient and do actions i recommended at the beginning because your hand will get stiffer with this type of a movement and yeah just do it for every finger and then your goal is that you want to get a little bit of extension or you want to get those fingers to kind of almost have that like involuntary reaction of extending and then for the wrist same thing you're kind of going against gravity here but you can work on extending your wrist in this position if you can't do it in this position pull your hand all the way back and turn it sideways and see if you can extend it in that position that's what we call gravity eliminated so it might be a little bit easier for you to extend the wrist in that position and then one of my favorite tools if you are working on active movement in your hand is theraputty they come in a four pack i'll put a link for it in the description below if you are in that flaccid stage and you're just starting to see a little bit of movement therapy is great you can actually do a lot of different things with it. a couple of the activities i like is just to pinch it with your fingers rolling it out is good for weight bearing if you have a lot of spasticity i would avoid squeezing it in your fist i think that um, that is really counterproductive if you have spasticity in your wrist and your hand and then just kind of pushing into it and extending those fingers so kind of like separating it or creating holes in it again working on that extension
and then that is it for today's video it was getting a little bit long and I know that this is not something that I could do in one video there are other treatment options that um, you you guys have asked about definitely the mirror mirror box works really really well and e-stem so those are two other options for the e-stem I would feel more comfortable if someone started out working with a physical therapist just to get the pad placement right with that but i hope you found this video helpful i know you guys have been asking for this for a really long time i get a comment about it in probably almost every video and this is the first time i've really devoted a video just to the wrist and the hand so i've intermixed it in some of the upper in some of the shoulder and elbow videos but this is the first one just devoted to the hand so i hope you found that helpful if you're new to my channel and you haven't yet subscribed please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell I upload videos every week to help you enhance your home exercise program. I want to encourage you all to just keep leaving your comments, keep supporting each other, building each other up. I love going through the comments. It's not about me. I love you guys and I love all the great positive feedback I get, but I would love it if you guys would encourage each other as well. I love that we have this little community, so keep those comments coming. And that is it. That's all I have for today's video. I enjoyed spending time with you guys today, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. You all have a great day.